what's going on everyone welcome to the rec nation guys um it's 9 11 september 11th right this is a uh a day i it's one of those days that that i will never forget where i was it's one of those days where time sort of slowed down you know i remember i was in high school at the time and we were in class and people started my class was right next to uh the library in school and the teacher and a lot of a lot of us in the class saw people running or running and walking really fast towards the library and so the teacher went out of the classroom and asked what was happening and they were like you gotta you gotta turn the news on like right now and we watched it we watched it as we watched as all of this transpired and you know it's it's funny it's like those moments that happen those big moments that happen like get burned in like when you this was my first time i i feel like i realized that this moment was bigger than what was happening in my life i remember i was in high school so you know high school you have blinders on you're just worried about you solo that's kind of how high schoolers think but i'll never forget this is the moment that i'm like oh man this is this is going to set a course of action for a lot of years to follow and this i i would say directly impacted my my life you know um after 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 high school went to college college just wasn't for me spinning tires um it was what i felt like i was doing so i went to the military i wanted to join the military obviously the next day too young um and my mother my mother was like i was gonna do um marines because the marine recruiter was was pretty active in our high school right uh but my mother wouldn't sign until i had gone at least to a, a year of a year of college and then i could then i could choose then i could go so i did that and then my uncle who is a vietnam vet was like go go army go army and um and i talked extensively to family members that had had served and in multiple branches and they were like you know what do what's right for you do whatever calls you so that's that's my path i chose army u.s army and so because of this you know it directly lines up to the the next what would be, what would be the next eight years of my life so this is this is the first moment this is the first moment in my life where i felt uh gl like repercussions that would happen as a as on a bigger scale so guys that's just my little bit of my story it's not about me let's check out the um let's check out let's check this out this has been hovering around for a while i i know a lot of reactors have reacted to this and i haven't i haven't seen it i just never clicked on it i just you know what i mean it's one of those things so if i want to see some of the for the first time i want to see it here with you guys that's how we do it all right let's check it out this is um boat lift an untold tale of 9 11 resilience all right ready three two one let's go guys a hero is a man who does what he can I thought I was watching a movie, Towering Inferno at first. And then I looked real close, and I noticed it was the World Trade Center. I was compelled because I'm a type of person that can't stand by and watch other people suffer. And to me, they were suffering. They wanted to get off the island. And there was no way for them to get off the island other than the water. And I had noticed when I was watching the television, I saw a lot of... You know, the ferries going up into the slips and taking people off. I said, fine, we could do the same thing. I could take people on my boat, get in there, take them where they have to go. And that's what we did.
On the morning of September 11th, when the towers came down, millions of people ran for safety. Hundreds of thousands of them ran south to the water's edge. That's when they realized that Manhattan is indeed an island and that they were trapped. They were feeling helpless. And that's the worst feeling in the world. What was a person on the ground going to do? Buildings were down. There were people laying under the rubble of the building. Firemen, civilians. My wife was there. And I turned around. I says, I've got to go do something. Just like that. And she looked at me. She says, what are you going to do, you maniac? I says, I'm going to take the Amberjack up into the city and help. She says, but what if they're attacked again? I says, well, then that's something I have to live with. I says, I have to do what I have to do. I says, and nobody can stop me right now. E even if I save one person or I rescue one person, that's one person less that will suffer and die. They were trying to evacuate Manhattan because nobody knew what was going on. You know, you didn't know something else was going to happen. It was just, uh, you know, a madness on one side and, you know, and wanting to help people on the other side. They were just streaming out of the buildings. And the first mode of transportation they saw was a, a ferry boat. And that's when they knew, this is how I'm getting out of here. So they didn't even care where the boat was going. There wasn't panic in New York in the beginning just volume. So it wasn't until the first building fell that there was panic. You heard the building go down, but we're in the slip, so we can't see it. That's when we started letting go, and then all of a sudden, whoop, engulfed. You couldn't see anything. People were actually jumping into the river and swimming out of Manhattan. Boats were very nearly running them over. Wait, 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 wait. These people wanted out of Manhattan no matter any way they could. Somebody wants you to go over there. Every mode of transportation out of Manhattan was shut down. All the subways were shut. The tunnels were all closed. They closed the bridges. They closed everything immediately. Boats, usually an afterthought in most New Yorkers' minds, were for the first time in over a century the only way in or out of Lower Manhattan. The process that actually had already started, there were some boats that were grabbing people, that people were lined up at the walls. On the left, on the left, on the left. It's just human nature. You see people in distress on the seawall in Manhattan begging you to pick them up. You have to, you have to pick them up. They didn't know what was going on. They seen the building getting hit with these two planes. As far as they were concerned, you know, we were being bombed. I was wondering if they were going to come on the boat, if, if they were, had people with bombs or if they were going to come on. We're a big orange target in the middle of that harbor. My job is to keep the boat safe, my passengers safe, my crew safe. Everybody was in shock, running around. They didn't want to leave their families. They had loved ones running around the city. One guy ran from the apron and jumped onto the boat. He grabbed onto the metal, climbed up right next to the pilot. So I'm going out there to say something. He slides down to the next deck so that the deck hands get him and go, what, you know, what are you doing? He goes, I'm jumping for my life. So, you know, you couldn't argue with him there. There was a small boat that was uh, at the lower tip of Manhattan. I thought the boat was going to flip over because so many people were trying to get on. And as I looked behind, they were, they were just 10 deep. And that's kind of what gave us the idea. We decided that this has to get better organized and we better do it, and that's what we did. So we decided to make the call on the radio. All available boats. This is the United States Coast Guard board, the pilot boat from New York. Anyone want to help with the evacuation of Lower Manhattan? Report to Governor's Island. When that call came on the radio, they were coming. I was uncertain of who was going to respond. About 15, 20 minutes later, there were just boats all across the horizon. 
literally a hundred targets converging on the lower part of Manhattan. When we came out of that dust cloud, tugboats, I've never seen so many tugboats all at once. There was just a, like a fleet of tugboats headed to Manhattan. If it floated and it could get there, it got there. All different size, shapes, and form. I mean, and they were zooming across this water. Furries. You know, that's what happens. You know, like, it's, it's, it's kind of, um, it's kind of insane. Like, in this moment, you know, now, now with hindsight, like, you, we, you can't look at this with the eye, like, through the eyes, um, of us here in 2024, uh, because that's unfair to this, this very big moment. Uh, no one knew what the hell was going on. You know, I, my mind would have been like, we're getting, we're getting bombed at that point with that much smoke, that much chaos, everyone absolutely running. There's absolutely zero information on what's going on. Um, they're closing up the island. You got, you, you know, self-preservation. You want to get off. You got to get off. And so regardless of of what these captains thought was happening, they knew what the right thing to do was. And that's that's pretty, that says something, man. That's huge. That's huge. And, yeah, it's it's a testament to, definitely to the bravery of, of these these all the boat captains like in new york at that time just absolutely there for the for the people how can you not be there for the people especially your people you know and when i mean that it's just like new yorkers new yorkers they're there for new yorkers and that's 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 what it's about it's like this is how you rally this is how you help this is you know and a lot of people just like the one guy said jump you can't i'm jumping for my life it's like yeah, fair point. Fair point. Man. If it floated and it could get there, it got there. All different size, shapes, and form. I mean, and they were zooming across this water. Ferries, private boats, party boats. I worked on the water for 28 years. I've never seen that many boats come together at one time that fast. One radio call, and it just came together just that fast. Hundreds of boats converged on the city, leaving the sun-bathed harbor behind them. Dead ahead, the unknown. That was something I won't forget. It was just low, dark, acrid, black smoke. It was like there was a big chimney in Manhattan. When we pulled into Pier 11, the dust was unbelievable. And then out of nowhere, you just kept on seeing people coming. They looked like zombies coming through the fog, and you knew that they were, those were human beings. Don't leave us. Please don't leave us here. Take us. Do you need help? Do you need help? Do you need help? At that point, the Coast Guard said, not how many people are you allowed, how many people can you fit? Yeah. Come on, guys. Anybody coming? Get your ass up. Boats started hanging, literally would take a bed sheet off a bunk and then a can of spray paint and paint their destination on. Some of these people never been in the water, never been on a boat before. Housewives, workers that do windows. We had executives. And the thing that was the best. Thank you. Everyone helped everyone. I want you to hold my hand. Come on board. Get inside. One at a time. Get inside. Get inside. I saw four businessmen lifting up an old woman with a seeing eye dog, the German Shepherd, and they lifted her up like a surfboard and passed her over the handrails. When we would carry a load of people over, and there was somebody standing there that seen their husband or wife, you know, that made us feel even better, you know. Well, at least we got two back together, you know. Let's keep on going, you know. The guy that works at the ferry, he's a, a welder. His son was on my boat. He he actually came up. Uh, he thanked me. We went back and forth all day long, carrying boat loads as many as our, our boat would hold.
Wow. where 339,000 British and French soldiers were rescued over the course of nine days. On 9-11, nearly 500,000 civilians were rescued from Manhattan by boat. It took less than nine hours. Wow. I believe somebody has a little hero in them. You gotta look in. And it's in there. It'll come out. It need to be. I have one theory in life. I never want to say the word I should have. If I do it and I fail, I tried. If I do it and I succeed, better for me. And I tell my children the same thing. Never go through life saying you should have. If you want to do something, you do it. Man. Ah. What an awesome production, man. That's crazy. Biggest boat lift in history, man. That's nuts. Or at least at the time of this. Um, wow. I'm glad we checked that out. I'm glad I clicked it. I'm glad we're on this journey, you know. Guys, man, what a, I mean, it's just what a day. Like, it's it's hard to wrap everything up in a nutshell, how, how big, how big this day was and how, you know, in 2024, right, and I'm talking to our American folk in the, in our, within our communities, um, it hurts. It hurts to see that like this was the last time we were truly unified. It it just hurts. You know? Like that spirit where we're all together, right? This this moment we were all cuz undeniably we were we all were one. Right? There was no divisions. We were just Americans, we were unified. And it just hurts hurts that that is that unification that 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 america you know was the reason was one of the many reasons i i i took my oath to to go over you know in in in, the, in those times to go over and uh fight and protect you know that's the reason I signed up is, is to, to, yeah, that's where, that's where I saw it. I was like, oh my God, for one moment, blink of an eye in, in, I guess, stepping back and you look at the course of history, that, that was a blink of an eye, that moment, that era, um, we were, we were, uh, we were America, we were one and it's just a shame, you know, I'm not going to get on this crazy, crazy soapbox here. I'm not going to, it's not. You know, it's not my 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 place. I'm not as good at conveying my emotions as others are. I'm no wordsmith. I'm just a simple dude, right? Simple dude. I miss that. I miss when we were unified. You know, it was better times. And um, yeah, guys. This is just, it harkens back, seeing that just, it just goes back to the time. I'm transported back to then. And, uh, man, man, it's a, it's a, it's a shame that, you know, what, what happens is that it takes a big tragedy for us to unify. I wish it didn't have to take a massive tragedy to unify this country, you know? That's just plain and simple. You know, it's just, how do I say this? This Okay, my, my personal feelings, right? And if you guys don't want to hear this, please click out of the video. Look, you have moments like Pearl Harbor where we were unified. And we were just like, and all of our bullshit to the side, we are going. We are jumping into this. This is one of those. And it's like, you know, even the the, the Japanese, was it, commanders? Like, we, we, we woke He's like, I'm afraid we woke a sleeping giant, right? Well, I don't know why this giant is so narcoleptic. Why do we keep falling asleep? And that's 
that's the unfortunate thing. It's like, I, once again, I think we're a freaking asleep, you know. But anyway, guys, listen, much love. Thank you for, for rocking with me. Thank you for rocking with our journey over here on YouTube. Guys, um, remember, we are checking out a very important documentary called World at War. That's over on Rumble. All Rumble is free. Rumble is 100% free. It is a way for me to get you guys content without putting it behind a paywall. And we are checking out other um, military movies uh, along with this channel's military reactions. It's like a parallel journey. Just on Rumble, I don't have to worry about nothing getting blocked. So anyway, guys, much love. Make sure you unplug, do something legendary. And I'll see you all in the next video. Later, guys.